Hi everyone, welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword 100% walkthrough with me, Austin John Place, the guy who's wearing a t-shirt with his own name on it. In our last episode, we went to the ancient cistern, did pretty much the best dungeon in the entire game, you can stop playing now. I experienced the best boss in the game, my last statement remains true, and that was it. Today we're going back to Lanayru, and we're going to the Sand Sea. My synopsis for this one is also good, which is, we get to run around the desert, not the volcano, what a twist, get the claw shot, get all the goodies that was locked behind it, do a bunch of side quests, become a pirate, play Minecraft, kill the same spider, oh, and more time travel. It's, it's a twist because... You know, when we first played the game, we did the, the grass area, and then we did the fire area, and then we did the sand area, and now we're doing the grass area, and instead of doing the fire area again, now we're doing the sand area, so it's a nice change of pace. To date, we have 14 pieces of heart, 16 cubes, 15 of them activated, 42 gratitude crystals, 6 of the 10 medals, and 14 hearts. Right? Yes, 14 hearts. It's literally on screen. Great. We need to not go here. In fact, we're actually going to go directly to our objective right now because, as I mentioned in the synopsis, we are going to be getting the claw shot, which is going to unlock several things for us. Uh, I'm also very excited that we get to do all of the goddess cubes that we saw around. Nope, nope. We get to do all the goddess cubes that we saw around the desert. And, yeah, stuff like that. Anyways, let's go to Thunderhead. How much of a child am I? It's like... Oh, I'm out, and I have to poop? Nope. <laughs> I just find it so weird when he's at that angle, and if you're holding up on the joystick, that's the that's the native direction that Link goes to. So, yeah, that's a thing. Oh, my new longer sword, I love it. Oh, the statue comes down from the ceiling this time. Pretty sure it came up from the ground before. Correct me if I'm wrong here. Two sacred flames remain. Should you desire to possess them, you must obtain the other sacred gifts. For each trial you overcome, you shall be blessed with another gift. Harness the power of these gifts, and let there be no doubt you shall find yourself standing before, a, before the majesty of the sacred flames. Now, I give you another melody. It will serve as a key to unlocking your next trial, which awaits for you in the Lanayru Desert. Time to learn a song. We've we've seen this animation. We know We know what's going on. Well, fantastic. Now that we had that cutscene, which was almost identical to the previous time that we were here, let's go to Lanayru. We're going to be dropping down to the North Desert area. That's where we, we finished up last time. And it's like, oh, wow, we have to use our dowsing ability to find where the to find where the next trial is. It's right there. <laughs> so here we're going to be doing another Silent Realm, similar to how we did last time. Oh, i got to play a song now. Now this looks like a job for me, so everybody just follow me cause we need a little controversy cause it feels so empty without me. Little Hellions, kids feeling rebellious, the bears and Paris still listen to Elvis. They start feeling like prison is helpless, someone along an erection and yells, <coughs> Visionary, visionary, start a revolution, polluting raise a rebel, so just let me rebel a basket of fact that everyone kissing my- Oh, we're done. I like how right now there's the Bokoblin that's just looking at us. He's like, nah, I'm messing around with that sword witch thing. Well, fantastic. Let's ready our sword. Oh, there's a tumbleweed. We don't need it. Now it's time for the Silent Realm. And I have an idea. We're going to do this entire portion of the video in an ASMR style because it's the Silent Realm and it seems only appropriate. You're gonna notice that there's a lot of snitches in that open area. We definitely don't want to interfere with them. <sighs> v is gonna inform us that we're gonna be getting the spirit vessel again. The mysterious plant represents my spirit. After I complete this, I will have a new power given to me by the goddess. I do not have any questions. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to be taking a look at the area that we have to explore. The path that I'm going to be choosing to take is not getting the ones that are super easy like this one right here. Instead, I'm going to be heading up around here and I'm going to be going around the outside of the perimeter because in my opinion, these ones right here with the minecart are much more difficult. Our journey to the first one is a little strenuous to say the least. It's important to save all your stamina for when you're running across the sand because the Guardians can definitely get you easily. We got our first tier of Nehru. Fantastic. That's going to give us 90 seconds to get to our next destination, 
which is going to be around the perimeter clockwise. Now you definitely don't have to follow the same path that I'm taking, it's just the one that I want to do this time. But if you choose to not take this path, it's important to remember to save the easy ones for a little bit later in case you get caught in a sticky situation to say the least. Nice. Now we're going to be making our way to these two minecart ones. One of them is present around a pool of, uh, of uh, the walking water. That's it, the walking water. I was going to call it the icky juice. Same thing. This one is pretty difficult. You need to time getting really close. One, two, three, four. Okay, I got five pulls off. Normally it's only a four. I'm going to wait until it recedes again. And this should be able to... Give me the rest of the way. This should be able to be the rest of the way. Now I see that if I were to jump off, I am going to be getting it, and that's what we want. Beautiful. Now you're going to see a minecart over here. This is just so we could climb up the top here. And now we're going to be crossing this very open area that's full of all these proxy guys. Okay? I know it's difficult, but I believe in you. And you can do it. Time yourself with the stamina fruits. And no matter what, you are going to get caught. But it's fine, because you're actually kind of far away from the guardians. I wouldn't worry about it. And by the time you reach this tier over here, you should have plenty of time to escape them. From here, the next five that we're doing on the map is the one right next to us. Then we're heading north to get these two. And then we're going to be making our way to the center area for the last ones. As I mentioned before, this is going to be a struggle, and you won't get caught. That is okay. Do remember that even if you fail, you get to keep all of the dusk relics that you collect on your entire journey. I don't like this guy on the left. He's freaking me out, man. Oh, and this is the one with the tree. That's fine. We have plenty of time. Nice. Now we're just gonna head north, similar to the area that we were when we threw the bombs into the cages. There's one on top of this cage right here, and for that we need to take this minecart and push it toward the middle. Once you push it all the way, you can climb up. From here, we're gonna be getting these two on the outer perimeter of the mining facility. Make sure you have enough stamina to run up that, and we're gonna run up these as well. From here, it's just a short walk to the other one on top of one of the feet pillars. We have two left at the center. One of them is going to be another foot pillar. Then we're going to climb all the way to the top. Here's our additional foot pillar. And now we're going to climb to the top. You're going to notice that some of the walls have some very subtle finds on them. Don't worry, because there's no snitches here. There's only one guardian at the top, so don't even fret. From here, we only have three left. One on top of that platform. We could hop down and grab that one in case, or we can come here and grab that one, but this one is actually kind of easier to get. So, let's hop down. Also, fun fact, there's no fall damage here. We're going to be able to sneak over here to the right. These ones are not the proxy ones, so if you get close, it's not going to come after you. It's only if you're in the direct searchlight. Now we're going to run to the next one. That one was very close. Wow. But we got that deer. Hop down. And we made it. Now I'm going to choose to not get this one right now, just in case this one goes awry. Okay. I remembered him being a lot more dangerous than he is. And right here is going to be the 15th. And we're done. We collected every last tier, and by saving that one to the very end, we could just walk right here. Feel free to use the next 90 seconds to look for any simple dusk relics that you may want to pick up, as the north of the desert has a few of them, and not a lot of snitches. And fantastic! And boom, we get the claw shots. It's funny how our first item that we get is a special mystical necklace that lets us swim out underwater, and this is literally equipment. <laughs> You've played a Zelda game before, you don't need me to explain what claw shots do, do you? No, you're fine. Yes, Fee. Congratulations, Master. Thanks, Fee. You now have the power to proceed to the Sacred Flame. Well, fantastic. That was 
literally the objective, so good to know. Hey, claw shots are one of the goddess's sacred gifts. Seems like a really weird gift. Uh, okay, as soon as we start off, we have a couple of things that we want to do. We're going to claw shot up here, and we're going to come open this chest. That's going to be a dusk relic. It's weird to get one of those outside of the dusk realm. There are a few goddess cubes that we are going to be getting right in the desert. The first one, if you remember, we did this path bomb, this wall walk through here with the two electric chews, the one electric chew, and that was a piece of heart. Well, there's a claw shot path that we can now do. So let's go on, head over there. And the nice part is now you can just take your claw shot out and navigate uh, so much easier without having to run everywhere. Isn't that so nice? So nice. Have I mentioned how much I hate electric based enemies? <laughs> Oh, three, three mob drops. Yeah, yeah, curse metal definitely works. Okay, what we have to do, grab the claw shot out. We're going to aim it right meow. And then we're just kind of, kind of go back to back all throughout this entire corridor here. And if we run straight down, there's one last claw shot target right here. I also like that they made it so you could just hit B and then B again to let go. That's much more intuitive of a control. And that's a goddess cube that we want. Great. Using the Lene Remining Facility in the middle of the map as sort of a reference point and a way to travel around, we can see right here that there's one more goddess cube that we need to get, and a claw shot target is present right here on the outside. And we just casually walk on over. How nice is that? Super nice. Now that we have the claw shots and we did those two goddess chests, there's actually a bunch of things that we could do now in Skyloft. So we're gonna go to Skyloft. Actually, scratch that. First, we're just gonna generally go to the sky. As soon as we leave here, that there is going to be a chest just next to Fun Fun Island. We're gonna be heading over there first. We've already been to this island. We got a chest here already. And now we're gonna hop on out. And if you aim it just perfectly, yep, got it. And we got another life medal. This gives us one entire full heart while we're traveling around. How nice is that? That's the second of two. Our next destination is gonna be in the northeast of the sky, right next to Bamboo Island and Beatles Island. Landing at this island, perfectly in the water I might add, we could just swim down and get ourselves this chest, which has a heart medal, which makes hearts appear more often. As I mentioned before, in hero mode, that stuff still applies. There's also a fairy in here. Do I need that? I do, but... I'm, I'm gonna need a bottle for something right now, so it doesn't help. Oh, that was a nice little combo. And while we are here, before we head back to Skyloft, a place that I neglect for essentially the first third-ish, first half-ish of the game is the Bamboo Island. It's essentially a game of cutting down a piece of bamboo and doing as many cuts as possible. Oh, look. Yeah, there is a thing here. Hey there, mister. You gonna give us some helpful hints or advice? Ooh, golden thing. You can get a valuable treasure if you can succeed in cutting the bamboo stalk over 28 times at clean cut. Pieter, who was formerly the teen heartthrob of Skyloft, claims to hold the record of 43, or so he says. I'm pretty sure that if we get 20 to 27, we get an evil crystal or a monster horn. And if we get 28 or more, we get a bluebird feather, a golden skull, or a goddess plume. Uh, we're going to be able to grind monster horns soon, but grabbing one right now would actually be helpful. And I want to see if this is easier with the Joy-Con. Oh, I'm just doing spin attacks if I do that too much. Okay, I don't want to do that. I was just hitting left and right way too fast. Oh! Right at the end, I uh, I found my I found my temple right at the end there. Yeah. Gonna give me a prize? Yay! We got the monster horn that we needed. Did I need like exactly one monster horn? Did I need more monster horns? No, I needed a total of three. Great. All right, let's head back to Skyloft. We're now gonna be landing in Skyloft right next to the waterfall because there was a goddess chest at the very top of the waterfall that we were not able to get before, and now we can. Sweet. And if we head toward the waterfall, you're gonna see that there's an island in the sky that in the original version I missed quite a bit because, you know, we didn't have a free roaming camera. And if we climb up just a little bit more and a little bit more, we can now make our way all the way up here where we can jump off this side right at this chest for a golden ruby. Nice. We do have some side quests that we're going to be doing right now. 
And the very first side quest that we're going to be doing involves get buying a stamina potion. Good thing we just got 300 rupees. Let's head inside of the bazaar. Hello, yes, one stamina potion, please. Also, we can go over here and talk to Gondo. I'm finally gonna upgrade my seed satchel now that I have the appropriate amount of ornamental skulls. That's a fun thing, right? Right. And while we're over here, we could talk to Patrice. I pretty much never use my seed satchel, ironically, because I just upgraded it, and I want that extra life medal. And now I have 15 hearts. Nice. Up next, we're going to do a quick little thing just to help Fletch out. Remember how we had to wait until nighttime and then give him a potion? Well, we're going to do the exact same thing again. Uh, just to save even more time, I'm going to sleep in his bed until night. Hey, buddy. Oh, he's on 57 push-ups. You're feeling so sluggish? Well, why don't you have another stamina potion? Nom nom nom, that's so delicious, isn't it, buddy? Well, great. How many do I think you could do? Uh, about a thousand. That many? Really? Okay. I guess there really is no gain unless there is also pain. So much pain. Uh, that sounds like really working out. He gets it. Continuing with side quests in Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, while it is still nighttime, let's go and head upstairs and exit from the academy. And who are we gonna do, go do? We're gonna do the baby rattle. Okay. We need to find the house that belongs to the potion shop owner. I think it's the, I think it's this one right here. Yes, yes it is, great. Uh, we see the potion lady sleep in there, and we see the husband who does all the mixing of the potions. He's crying, or he's awake because the baby is crying. And the baby is crying because the baby doesn't have the baby's rattle, right? Before we lost the you-know-what. No, what? The baby's rattle. Okay, now we need to go find the baby's rattle, which we can totally do no problem. Pet the kitty. Bad kitty. Oh wait, I could have just slept in his house, couldn't I have? And while you're next to him, you can actually just sleep in his bed because trust me, he's not gonna need it. Not with that baby crying as much as he is. And we need to go back to the top of the waterfall where we just were. Literally exactly how we were before. Once we reach the top of the waterfall, you're gonna see another goddess chest that we ha have not yet activated. I'm pretty sure we weren't supposed to have activated that yet. And I think there's a pop-up stone here. Yes, there is. Are you going to give me a hint to the quest I'm currently doing? Ooh, it's a goddess plume. Thanks, guy. You're a weird one climbing all the way up here. Hey, if you dive off the ledge here, I bet you could land in the nest on top of the tower down there. But what do I know? I'm a stone. Yeah, that's actually exactly what we're doing. If I were to go into uh, search mode and I look down, see those two rupees down there? That's our destination. So, let's go. Get a running start. We're gonna hold up. I was not going up enough. Okay, now we are going plenty up, center, and boom, baby rattle. Let's uncover it with the gust bellows. And boom, baby rattle, got it. Now from here, let's make our way into the bazaar once again, just because I think if you spoke to Patrice enough, you may have enough, um, I'll, let's call them affection points for her quest to now initiate because we spoke to her yesterday, we slept last night and now it's today. Okay, we haven't. So say that you're gonna store something, you don't actually have to store anything and we're gonna leave. So now let's just make our way back to the potion shop guy's house and sleep in his bed and wait for him to get there. Guess what I did? I found the you know what. Yep, that's the baby's rattle. Who's a sleepy baby? Time for Betty bye. Like if you think about it, being on this island, like they don't have mass production. It's not like they can just buy another rattle. Oh great, we got five grab to do crackles. Great, let's head back to the bazaar to see if this sleep was enough to increase Patrice's affection. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Maybe you already hit that level. Maybe you're not gonna hit it yet. Patrice, do you love me yet? Oh, you, you came to see me. Yes, perfect. Uh, do you think it could be? Oh, this sounds bad. Oh, you're such a tease. Whoops, kind of forgot myself there. Back to work. Or was I? Oh yeah, I was going to ask if you wanted me to take care of you forever. Yes, please. Really? That makes me so happy. Oh no, I'm so sorry. I need to learn how to keep these delirious dreams in check. Oh wait, I mean, are there some items you want me to check? No thanks. Look, hon, it's not humane to tease someone this bored. Knock it off, okay? Okay, so now that she had that initiation dialogue, we could definitely tell that she's infatuated. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to this house directly underneath, which is her house. We're gonna sleep in bed until nighttime. You're gonna see our bamboo guy here, Pieter. Hey, you picked a good time to visit. Why is that? 
What do you mean, why? Yep, the shining star of the item check. The source <laughs> is the source of my problem. That's my darling daughter, in case you forgot. Anyway, she has herself an unwanted admirer. Now, I can't blame the feller. But I won't stand for it. No way, no how. I'm gonna find this rascal and give him a good whooping. You gotta help me out. You see anyone buzzing around my little flower? You give him what for and send him packing. I'll keep my peepers peeled too. All right, now that we spoke with him, we're going to sleep until the morning time. And we need to talk to Patrice about this because, spoilers, we are the admirer. And now Patrice has a quest bubble. Let's talk to her. <laughs> she says, I want you to visit me at my house tonight. I have something to say. And as we wake up, Patrice has a quest bubble. Let's go speak with her. Okay, so now you get the option of what you want to say. She says that she has something to say, and she's just going to ask us point blank. What do I think about her? You could either say you store items, or you could say I like you. Honestly, it doesn't matter. If you say you store items, you're going to break her heart, and then she says it's okay. Or you say I like you, which I like to do because it makes her happy, and you have to say really, and then she's like, really? I do. You're not lying, right? It's true. If you say no at any point, it's the same thing as just breaking her heart. And then she says, but I understand your true feelings better than you know. You're saying that you cannot give yourself over to love just yet. You have much more important things to do right now. You have some kind of serious job that you have to attend to first. If you weren't off on an adventure, you probably wouldn't need to come by the item check so often. And that's why I won't ask any more of you. I'll watch over you, protecting you from afar, keeping a vigilant eye on your items. And when your important work is done, we'll tell my dad we're in love. And boom, we get the grab to two crackles. If you said no and you broke her heart, you sleep again and then you speak to uh, Pieter. And then he says, oh, it's good to know that she doesn't have an admirer anymore. And that's that. That's the whole thing. Now that we have the claw shot, there's actually three more gratitude crystals that we can get. One of them in Skyloft. We're going to head over to the water fountain, waterfall. Yep, we're going to climb it a third time in this episode. And if we make our way to the top of the waterfall, you're going to see in the water itself is a gratitude crackle. For the next one, we're gonna make our way over toward the Knights Academy. Oh, by the way, I learned something neat. If you uh, know that there's a bug under a pot, you don't have to smash or attack the pot. You could just run through them and that'll push the pot out of the way and the bug comes out. Isn't that so neat? Anyways, we are going to go on top of the school, not inside of the school. So remember where you chose to or not to help out the, um, the Grandmaster with his little pet at the beginning of the game? Well, that's where we're gonna go. And once we're up here, you're gonna see a claw shot target. And we're gonna take it down. Inside of here, we're now going to make our way into essentially the air duct. And super creepy, we're going to drop down into Zelda's room. And get a grab to do crackle. Is there anything cool in her room we can investigate? We could sit down. Ooh, there's a book. This is Zelda's journal. Yeah, let's read it. Tomorrow's a big day, the wing ceremony. Finally, Austin J can take a big step toward becoming a knight. I can't wait to see him promoted to full knighthood. While I'm still a little worried, he might have some trouble winning the race. Lately, Austin hasn't taken his flight training seriously. Someone needs to make sure he doesn't mess up his chance. So I made up my mind. Tomorrow, I'll wake him up extra early and make sure he gets some last minute practice, whether he likes it or not. He has to win, or we won't be able to perform the closing ceremony together. Aw, she has a crush on me. Is there anything in here for me? It's a piece of heart! We're just kidding, I knew that was there. Totally. And there's actually one more gratitude crystal that you can get. However, it requires going to Beetle's Island at nighttime with Beetle there. But I believe there's a goddess chest that requires the exact same thing. So I don't understand why we would do the exact same thing for two small results. So anyways, now that we have over 50 gratitude crystals, let's go talk to Uncle Bats because we're gonna get a reward. Uncle Bats, can you give me the item? Because this episode is already long. We haven't even done the thing we need to do. Giant Swallow, thanks so much. Okay, bye. Okay, with all of those side quests complete, it's now going to be time for us to actually play the game. Hooray. So now we need to make our way over to the Lanayru Sand Sea. For this, we want to head down to the West Desert. And if you remember the two large areas that we had to ride these guys back and forth, that's where we are. That is the shortcut back to the first one, and then this is the progress to the second one. Perfect. We pushed this minecart down uh, because we were smart, right? We did that little bit of backtracking. And now that we're over here, we can take the claw shot out, and we can reach this upper area that was such a mystery before. Let's head inside. Welcome to the Lanayru Caves. Where there's another Goron. Hey there, mister. 
He's working on a thing. Do you guys have a secret? Ooh, evil crystal. Awesome. They say somewhere in this vast desert, there's a dragon who loves putting the abilities of those whom visit him to some kind of test. And as a reward, you'll get a shield stronger than any other. Yep, but that's endgame stuff. Great. Now we're going to approach Golo and speak with him, and he's just going to give us a key. It was important that we have that dialogue. Oh, so there's a chest here. What's in here? It's just a treasure, isn't it? Oh, it's Monster Horn. Cool. Oh, and this is where we learn that we can use our whip to take monster horns off of Bokoblins who are blowing their monster horns. Isn't that so neat? Anyways, let's claw shot to the locked door. And now, welcome to the Lanayru Sand Sea. Fee's gonna update our map. This whole area was once a vast ocean. And now, it's a sea of sand, but the water has all but evaporated. Ta-da, Sand Sea. From here, there's gonna be a whole bunch of claw shot targets. That's going to give us a path downward. We are going to be taking these claw shot targets downward. Down here at the port, you want to make your way to this gray path right here. And when you do, you can use your claw shot target to grab over there. And you're going to see a cave. Inside of this cave is going to be a whole bunch of spiders. Whole bunch of them. Already got two blobs, three blobs. Yeah, yeah, definitely stack. Got us cube. Let's activate this bad boy. Now we're going to hop on out and make our way over to the burb statue and activate it and onto the pier where we're going to see an old statue and a time shift crystal. Hit the time shift crystal. Robot comes to life. His name is Skipper as opposed to Scrapper. I like it. The time shift stone goes inside of the boat and is now a source of power. Speak to Skipper. He's going to give you an explanation on stuff and what's going on and how to operate the ship. And then you're going to be on the water. Skipper is going to explain that he believes that this power source is going to be on a boat that he used to be the captain of and then pirates took it over and now he's no longer the captain of it and they turned the boat invisible and we have to go to his house and get a map the whole thing summarized also it's weird that this boat has a sprint option we're going to make our way to the place that was marked on the map and it's skipper's retreat we already saw a goddess cube and a moblin and a new mechanic and a bunch of cicadas. Isn't that all awesome? Everything here is awesome. This entire area is linear. So make sure to activate the bird statue. And we have so much that we have to do here. Like, honestly, so much. So I'm going to focus on the real parts here. Now we're going to make our way forward. This is a new mechanic that we're learning that there are these plants in the sky that we can hook onto. And we grab this bottom uh, target nipple shape thing. There's going to be a bombable wall right next to a bomb cactus. I hate electric based enemies. When it looks like you're at a dead end, you want to look up and then you could find more, more flying flower targets. You could dig right here for some ants. Just one this time, just zero this time. Here's a moblin. You remember how to get past moblins, right? Just run on top of them. I hate these plants so much. Oh yeah, that's right. They only take two hits now. Isn't that so awesome? There's a red rupee, but the point of that red rupee is to face you this way. That way you look at that goddess cube far away. And the trick here is you're going to claw shot onto these vines. You cannot climb up. Instead, you have to climb to the other side. Then hit the claw shot button again go all the way up and activate the goddess cube. Now we're gonna backtrack back to that red rupee. And if we head the north way, you're going to see a small place that we can go that's being overlooked by a phoenix. Also, you're going to see this guy in the ground that you're going to whip out and that's going to literally just take one of those plants out of the ground. Everything takes so little less hits now. Isn't that so nice? So nice. Before you claw shot to this next target, you're gonna see something blue. That's going to be a Deku Baba. Use your beetle to take care of it first, and then you can claw shot over safely. And finally, claw shot over with good timing to the last area. I like how much my hat is moving and dangling right now. And before we walk into the door, we want to climb up to the top of this building because there are going to be some cicadas up there for us. Remember to move cautiously. Take out your big bug net. Nice. Usually there are three separate groups of them. And you have to approach them all very slowly. After you fail or collect the three groups of cicadas, we are actually going to make our way inside of this building now. 
And it looks like someone left the window open. Oh, there's some bugs. Kill all the bugs. Use your gust bellows to clean off everything, including getting a whole bunch of treasure like these two ambers and this goddess plume over here. There's a stool in the middle of the room to recover your hearts. And inside of the treasure chest is going to be the sea chart that we require. Fee is gonna say, hey, look around. <laughs> That's a Titanic recreation, adorable. It's the captain or the skipper with all of his fellow uh, synthetic life forms. And as you're gonna see, they're they're here and they're old and they're rusted and they waited. And if you walk around the room, there's really adorable, adorable letters like thank you for everything, Captain. Dear Dad, good luck at work. Like some real like heart string tearing stuff in here. Anyways, we're going to get revenge for you, buddy. Don't you worry. The reason I told you to go and get the cicadas before we went into there is because that cutscene will initiate the cicadas respawning. Oh, yeah, look at that. Going in and out of the building will respawn the cicadas. Boom, cicada farming. 100 rupees each. Next up, you're going to see one of the most exciting things ever. It's a zip line. Be sure to grab it. And it's going to take you down halfway. And there's going to be another zip line that's going to take you back to the entrance of Skipper's Retreat. Speak with Skipper and inform to him that you now have the sea chart and we are ready to set sail. He updates your map with the sea chart and shows you the location of the shipyard. That's our next destination and we're going there. This, uh, this journey is a little bit more treacherous. There's going to be some more enemies. There's going to be some bad guys who can shoot at you. There's going to be some random TNT in the water or explosives in the water. So uh, caution for all those things and make your way to the shipyard. This is gonna be the location of a sort of pain in the butt mini game later on. Not nearly one of the worst ones. The last location we need to make our way into is that building over there, but we need to take the long way around. Activate your burb statue. Let's defeat these Lizalfos that are now gonna take half as many hits as before. It's the worst when you defeat an enemy, they fall off to the side and then you don't get their drops. Following quite literally the only path of the only buildings, you're going to see a place that you could sit down and here is Gortram who is very very lonely it's actually part of his dialogue if you return later he's the one in charge of the mini game and for now the mini game is just ride the go-kart you literally can't mess up here so I'm not going to cover it now instead I'm going to be covering this when we are doing the mini game and we're timed but the basic idea is before a turn you want to be leaning into the turn that allows you to take the turns faster and if you lean the wrong way then you fall off simple as that in all actuality, the whole trick of the game is knowing where the turns are before the turns happen. From here, there's going to be one more minecart for the much more difficult portion of the game. Same rules, except now there's a lot more insta-death. In addition, you leaning before a split will influence the direction that you are going to go so that you, you know, don't die and stuff. Upon completion, there's going to be a save-only bird statue right before a boss fight. This boss fight is going to be very easy, so don't worry. Fee's also gonna inform you that there's no ship here. Thanks, Fee. Nope, just, just some spiders. If you hop down into the sand, take care of these little guys. So many mob drops now, so many. And you're gonna be tempted to blow away at this large pile in the middle. And guess what? It's the same boss that you already faced, except now, he has the same exact power, except you're twice as powerful now. Isn't that so neat? Get ready to dodge out of the way when necessary. These claws now only take half as many hits as before. Again, keep it moving. Be ready to dodge out of the way with A. And at phase two, just remember to keep stabbing him in the eye. Blow away the sand as fast as possible with the gust bellows. That'll wake him out of the sand. Watch out for this time that he spears at you, which I didn't. And I think there was only four eye stabs and he's dead. Oh, how the buddy have fallen. He will inform you that there is no boat here. Go defeat the Lozalfos again if you would like some more tails, although it's not necessary. And speak to Skipper and inform Skipper that the boat was not here. From here, we need to make our way to the Pirate Stronghold, which is just a short ways north. Not a lot of obstacles, not a big worry. Head on over there. Welcome to another mini dungeon. Yeah, this, this isn't even the actual dungeon yet, guys. All right, Pirate Stronghold. First order of business, we are going to be activating the burb. Hi, burb. We're gonna go up this. We are not going up the stairs. Instead, we are staying on the ground level and we are running to the right. 
between the choo-choos and you're going to be seeing a door. We're going through the door. People say, hey, look, this looks like a pedestal for a time shift stone, but there's no time shift stone. That's right, buddy. This whole shtick is going to be about taking a time shift stone and putting it there. If we open up the only door that we could enter, there's going to be two Lizalfos here again. Hope you want some more Lizalfo tails. We should really practice the, the, the top vertical spin attack into the jump attack. I feel like that's definitely the move for those guys, not actually, you know, fighting them how I am. And boom, it's a time shift orb. Isn't that so neat? Thanks, Fee. You've identified it's a time shift orb. We're going to pick up the time shift orb. And this room, we can unlock it by having the time shift orb. And by unlock it, I mean, you know, there's no longer barbed wire there. But yeah, let's just keep progressing through. You're going to revive some bokoblins. Make sure to kill them with your sword. Progressing through to the next room, you're going to be finding a Beemos. You know how to take care of Beemos. For this next room, you want to not bring the time shift orb over. Instead, you're going to open up that chest without the time shift orb. That's going to give you a silver rupee. Now we're going the only other way that we can with it. Ooh, two ancient flowers. Three ancient flowers. Okay, with the time shift orb, we are going to be making our way to this corner of the room, which is the northwest corner. We're going to hop over, hop over, hop over, hop over. You get the idea. Hop over all three of the pillars that come up out of the ground and into the next room. We're going to place down the time shift orb. Do not bring it to here. Grab the gate. The gate will open. We can grab the time shift orb. You could also use your whip if you want from now on. Whatever you want to do. In this room, when you spawn in, you're going to be seeing a treasure chest over here that you can't exactly reach. But you can just put down the time shift orb right next to it, run across the sand a little bit, and get the treasure chest. And inside's a monster horn. Neato. Making our way through the hallway, you actually don't need to fight these Dekus. You can actually just run past them neat enough. The trick to this room is you need to place down the time shift orb kind of on like a diagonal for this. So we're going to be moving this big old block that's then going to unlock the door. And you can go out this way. If that confused you at first, don't worry, it did for me too. First, we're gonna skip there and open up this chest for an evil crystal. The next room is gonna have two Beemos in it and my best advice for you is to put down the time shift orb just next to one of them or just so that only one of them can actually be spawned in because if you have both of them spawned in at the same time, trust me, you're gonna have a bad time. Take care of them, the only way you know how. And let's do that for the second one as well. Golly, I hate Beemos. I really do. With both of them defeated, you actually need to take the time shift orb and put it into the corner that the first one was in. And then we're going to run around the outside, the perimeter of the room. And then we can pull down this gate, which unlocks the gate. Grab the time shift orb. Go through that gate that we just unlocked. And oh, now we have these things. Welcome to the gauntlet of Lanayru places that I don't like dealing with. Can I do the stab one first? Yep. And then the slice one? Nope, not enough time. The stabby and the slicey. Good job. That will then open up the gate and you can take the time shift orb and place it on its proper pedestal. That then powers the entire boat, hooray! Let's head through the door that just opened up. There's gonna be a little cutscene showing you that, hey, there's totally some sunken ships. They're not doing too hot. And before you do anything else, turn around with your claw shot. This is one of the real hidden ones. There's a claw shot target up there and a claw shot target up there. And then once we get to the top, boom, goddess cube. From here, feel free to hop down the front. And now you need to walk on top of these cloths. And Fia's gonna say, I have information to report. These boats ain't doing too hot, dog. There's 60% probability that these masts and these sails are from the ship that protects Nehru's flame. Why she automatically assumes that that's going to be the proper ship or the proper sails from the same ship, I have no idea. But hey, let her believe what she wants. And we are almost done. Okay, we have almost found the dungeon. You have informed Skipper all the things that I have mentioned to you that Fee has blatantly told you, and this is a pain in the butt. What you have to do is you need to go into first person mode and it's gonna show you where the ship is, right? You then need to make your way on over there and you need to balance shooting it, driving the boat, and going into dowsing. 
I do believe it is always going to start over here-ish and generally remain in this area. In first person mode, you can also navigate the boat. You just can't boost it. Oh, you can boost it. Oh, they improved this. Okay. So in first person mode, you can search for it, navigate the boat, and you can turbo. So the only thing you can't do is shoot, unless I'm wrong here. Unless there's actually a shoot button that I don't know about. Nope, but there we go. The shoot target is gonna be showing you that, hey, it's gonna be next to a boat or a building or it's gonna conflict with a thing. Don't let it escape. Good. And if you don't let it escape, you can fire it three times about in a row. The cloaking will go away. And you're gonna notice that it's a giant boat on top of sand. How? I don't know. God magic. And that's gonna bring us to the ship. The next dungeon that we're going to be exploring in our 100% walkthrough of Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD for the Nintendo Switch. Oh no, no, stop, 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 stop. That that's the animation that I play when I do the next thing. Fine, I'll just reuse the same content. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thanks for checking out this video. If you haven't done so, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.